ITR boxing. You heard it here first. Pretty cool videos. And I heard they're also in HD. ITRboxing.com. I started boxing because, um, man, it wasn't nothing to do in the hood. I was chilling on the block, like fresh out of high school, kind of wasting time, doing nothing, not doing much, getting ready to go to, um, to a junior college. And then, uh, you know, it was the summertime, and one of the homies told me that they opened a, a um, boxing gym in the uh, local continuation school, which was like not about a mile from my neighborhood. So I never thought about boxing at all, and uh, um, I never thought about boxing, and I just happened to go up there one day, not the same day that he mentioned it to me, but I ended up going up there, and uh, I asked, uh, you know, dude, I've seen the dude that he was in there working or whatever. And I'm like, hey, bro, I'm like, um, can I, um, I'm like, let me fight. Let me, let me fight, dude. Let me fight somebody. And he was like, oh, I ain't gonna fight. Now. I didn't know they used the word spar. You feel me? I'm like, let me fight. And he's like, nah, man, we got to show you the jab. Of course, they wanted to teach the first punch, which is a jab. And I'm like, man, I did it for a second. I was just like, nah, man, what am I doing? I ain't gonna do this in no fight, you know what I mean? And um, he like, man, let me spar. I'm like, man, I'm out of here. He's like, all right, we ain't got nobody to wait. Then he was like, I'm like, I didn't know weight classes. I'm like, in the streets ain't no weight classes, you feel me? And I'm like, so uh, I might be too big for you. I'm like, man, whatever, I'm, let's do it. So they put me in there with him. And um, man, I did my thing. I dropped dude twice in one round. And like, they pulled the, pull the dude out. And um, man, uh, the OG, rest in peace, his name is uh, Johnny Mason. He's passed away now, he was like 81 then. Uh, he said, homeboy, I ain't gonna change nothing about you, homeboy. Nothing about you. And I guess he was just talking about my unorthodox style, you know what I mean? That day, I knew where I, that I was good in boxing because this guy had, was, he had been boxing for a year already, actually. And I knew I was good at fighting. See, it's the difference of being good at boxing and being good at fighting. But I was good at fighting because I was, I was a little street fighter, you know, and people may hear that like, oh, he was a little bully or something. I actually was a bully blaster. They called me the bully blaster. I would blast the bullies. Any guys that was picking on guys, I would always try to figure out a way to fight them. Like, you know, I would figure out a way to get into an uh, uh, argument with them to see if they was gonna come at me so they can fight me. Like, yeah, do it to me. And uh, I never thought I would actually fight, that I liked fighting until my cousin brought it to my attention. Like, Kareem used to like fighting. I said, no, I didn't. And he said, you did, think about it. When we were younger, every fight, you would try to step and fight every one of our battles. I'm like, no, but you're my little cousin. He said, no, you would do it for the big cousins too. And I'm like, hmm, interesting. I'm like, I guess I did like to fight, you know what I mean? But nevertheless, um, um, I knew how I can. Uh, I knew that I, when I, my first time I knew that I could fight was when I fought, uh, got another Sparta guy, and he had been boxing for a year and had good technique. But I'm like, I, I was, I wasn't, I didn't go in there just brawling, and I'm like, I was kind of doing some moving stuff. What I was thinking, I'm like, ooh, I'm doing something, I'm doing something. But uh, yeah, uh, but also uh, another moment was um, when I'm like, I, I actually can do it is. Uh, when I first spoiled my first professional, um, and um, uh, rest in peace, uh, James Bugs, and uh, he's passed away now. Uh, I sparred him, and um, you know, and he gave me inspiration to to um, keep pushing because he's like, man, you did good, but I mean, I didn't I didn't beat him up, but I did good with him, you know what I mean? And he was just like, man, you did good, man, you never fought, man. You never, he was like, you never, and you only did, he was like, you had no fights, you're like, man, you were good. So that's what I'm like, he was like, really, he like really put his hand on my shoulder, like, man, you can do something. So that was just like, all right, and that was just like, inspiration, inspiration for me to just push. Left hook to your body, watch me quiver your liver. I wear the ice down UPS chain, homie, cause I deliver. The good is that, uh, that to feel more, what we call the mo, we took off the R, so it's called Phil Mo. Phil Mo is um, a place where majority of the lingo around the Bay Area and overall world comes from Phil Mo. 
it comes from this one neighborhood. And I'm not going to take credit for all of the game, but a lot of the words lingo came from the Bay Area, San Francisco, Filmo, right? So, you know, that's one of the goods that, you know, San Francisco and Filmo, we kind of like, not kind of, we are, we laced, is what you call it, laced. It's like we had um, so many different diverse cultures that was kind of like dynamic. It made us very dynamic because, you know, it just gave us uh, a different look. You know, you got, you got like Filmo, we got, you can be um, the, the street part where you can be, you know, got your street cred, right? And then when it's time to shaping up, you're speaking intellectual. You know how to be with the corporate people. You know you um, you know how to um, be. Uh, you're a chameleon, and a lot of Fillmore cats is excuse me, Fillmore cats. I'm kind of speaking. There I go. See, I I forgot which interview we was in. I started speaking like Fillmore, like I'm you know politicking. But Fillmore cats, yeah, you know I mean, there we go. Um, but um, a lot of Fillmore cats. I mean, I'm sure Fillmore cats think I game, man. Like game is just like they lace. They like. You know what I mean? They like a lot of game come out of Fillmore. Now and then the bats now. Um, when I was coming up, you know, um, murders, man, drugs, um, being dis disenfranchised, you know, uh, gentrification, um, you know, uh, black on black crime, police brutality, you know, uh, all the things that you would see in a inner city neighborhood that you can imagine those things that occurred when I came up, when I was coming up. You know, it's, you know, it's kind of like catch 22 because it's like, well, it's not like that now, but um, it's actually, it still goes down in the mo, but um, it's it's definitely uh, slowed up, so to speak. But um, it's catch 22 because it's like, um, they're moving everybody out of here. You know, they, they, it's only 3% of uh, African Americans in San Francisco. Uh, what is it like? It's, um, oh my goodness, it's hard, bro. It's like, it's, it's not like, you know, throwing a party if you did a party before, said did something at a club, you know, if you be like, oh, I can promote. It is not that at all. You definitely have to have, to have a solid team, you know, and um, it's uh, the first show, you know, um, had taken some some big um, financial losses. Um, although um, uh, the first show, October first, we uh, excuse me, twenty first of uh, two thousand seventeen, uh, we did a show with um, a capacity. Um, we went, we um, had full capacity of thirty five hundred people, but through um, not making things uh, operate right and you know kind of bumping bumping my head, figuratively speaking, um, we took a loss. You know. A uh, uh, nice, nice chunk of money. But with that being said, it's difficult, and we we learned a lot though uh, as we um, moved moved forward. We actually um, brought Roy Engelberg in uh, for consulting, and that also helped um, a ton. And you know, now I just feel like uh, we we pretty much got the sauce to do what we need to do to to continue to move forward and make great fights. And so, as I mentioned earlier, fights in San Francisco has always been, um, no, excuse me, San Francisco has been a landmark for fights in the Bay, in the West. Oh man, that was a um, great experience, you know, being able to fight amongst uh, other fighters that was uh, hungry for the same thing I was ready to fight for. And, you know, um, I fought a, um, a good fighter, but um, I was pretty disappointed about the um, outcome of that fight. If you watch that fight, you're like, it, can, it just won't give Mayfield a break. And they totally robbed me, man. The guy ran the whole damn fight. And not like box, where you know some people call it boxing, or like, oh, he's running, but he's actually out slicking you and not getting hit. It wasn't, he was really literally running, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, um, and he helped, he held, um, over a hundred times, literally, I counted them. We had a point taken, but it was a horrible fight, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, I was, you know, when we heard open scoring, and I said, I knew someone right. They had, uh, I think they had me up 
um, just uh, out of one of the judges, and the other one's for him. And um, Smoker literally walked up to me, walked into our corner and said, uh, he's like, did you hear the scores? That's crazy. You're going to have to step it up, Kareem. That guy ran. I couldn't. But anyways, man, nevertheless, um, you know, this guy was supposed to be this highly touted um, Russian hundred something fighter guys. I whooped this dude, young, young, 21, young year old. I whooped him. That showed me that I'm ready to still whoop any of these dudes, man. You know what I mean? So I'm looking for the opportunity. I'm promoting myself again. Fight a few more fights. I'm really 3 and 0 in the last fights, man. So I'm not deterred by any means. And folks, uh, the Steve Forbes, I say, it was televised. My first televised fight. It was for um, yeah, Price Forbes. Uh, Forbes and Herrera. Yeah, I'd say Forbes and Herrera. Uh, those are, um, those stand out the most. Uh, yes, that's probably why. <laughs> Some checks. Um, but um, also, um, but the, the most memorable one for, as in like, trauma, so to speak, was against um, Patrick Lopez. Uh, and uh, Venezuela, Venezuelan um, Olympian guy, uh, South Paul, my first time fighting 140, but it was um, traumatizing because I got headbutt in the second round. And um, one round, I, I got two headbutts, slice right here, slice right here, bleeding out of both eyes in the second round, and my first 10 round fights at 140 pounds. So, like fighting through that, and he was tenacious. I kicked his ass, dropped him three times in the fight, and I honestly should have stopped it. Um, but it went the whole 10 rounds, but me fighting with that blood and just a tenacious guy, it was just traumatizing, man, you know what I mean? And me being cut actually by headbutts. How would I like the world to remember me in boxing? That Mayfield was ducked by everybody, even Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> Floyd called him out, yes, Floyd, man. He called me out. Google it. But, um, you know, Earth in the Grapevine, man. And yeah, his pops told him, don't fight that guy. Take Birdo. I trained with Floyd Sr. for a couple of months. So Floyd knew what it was. Floyd Sr. knew what it was. He told him, duck him. You mentioned the names, you probably thought it was gonna be an easy fight. Don't take that fight. So they ducked me. So for man, he was one of the most duck fighters, man. You know, I look back because you know, I think about it and I'm like, um, the type of, I only get, I've only gotten opportunities to fight um, on a high scale, on a high level, uh, was it's all short notices, like literally. Like all short notices and it's like, um, like why are they ducking me? That's, that's major ducks. It's made a major ducking, and obviously, I'm not, fighters. Some fighters are scared, but they are. They fighters are brave, and but you know, I'm sure I'm a, a bad fight for for anybody. They feel nobody will whoop him. They went on some points. <laughs> Mayfield wasn't go get whooped though. I got I got a couple of L's in my in my record, right? But Mayfield would never beat up, battered, or bruised. Do you hear me? Yeah, go watch it. Okay, like Mayfield lost to this guy, probably what, a handful of, handful of losses. Watch any of them fights. You'd be like, damn, Mayfield actually could have won them fights, man. Uh, Mayfield would never beat up, battered, or bruised on everything I love. And keep in mind, out of them five, never mind.